Okay, today we're going to look at how we can improve our collection. Now, this is what we have so far. Uh, we have banner, we've uh, made some nice buttons here, uh, we have some information about our collection here, best picture winners, Oscar, blah blah blah. We've got a nice footer saying what was updated and what it's got in it. We're going to add some additional value-added things today. What I'm going to do first is bring in some additional material to my collection. You notice I've got a selection of PDFs here that are supplementary documents about my main content, which is just the images. Now, these are movie reviews, academic papers, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is bring these in and process them, and I'm going to set up indexes for them. Okay, I've got brought in imported my um, PDF reviews and material into things. And you notice what I'm doing here. For each PDF file, I'm putting in DC format PDF. So this will make it different than these ones. So these ones are not going to have PDF in them, where these will. This will help me later when distinguishing between the two types of files. First thing I want to do is create an index based on these. I'm going to go off to design and I'm going to choose uh, a list type index and I'm going to add classifier. And this is going to be based on, let's see, the metadata is going to be based on is, so my new index is going to be based on DC title and I'm going to call it, uh, I'll call it something like reviews maybe. Now, though they're not all reviews. Uh, some of the things I have had are different than reviews. For example, this one's a journal article, an academic article. Uh, you notice I've put in their article up in DC subject and keywords. I have also got, uh, this is the publisher I put in here and who's written it. We see for some other ones, uh, this is a review. Uh, now you notice this is different from the other stuff I've got in there, but that's okay because I'm going to kind of keep the two things separate. So I'm using one DC element to hold two different things. Here's a review, the Hurt Locker is that's a review as well. Oh, actually, no, that's production notes, which I put in the wrong place, actually. Let's get rid of that. Uh, no, actually, I put it in subject of keywords or resource type. I can't remember. Uh, looks like I've used both. Okay, that's production notes. I should make this consistent. Review, production notes. Okay, that's review. Review down there. And this is a review. And Slumdog Millionaire is resource type is uh, an article. Okay, so I'm using a DC resource type and uh, publisher contributor to hold my stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I've got an index built, but there's going to be trouble because by default uh, things are going to show up. You notice our PDF ones are showing up here, ruining my beautiful uh, results. So I'm going to have to make some formatting changes to my existing indexes to make sure the PDFs don't show up there but they'll show up here when I'm going to make my articles index. So, once we've built our collection, it's off to format, format features, and here's our new index. This is the, uh, where is our new index? We've got index, you need to have a new index here that is done by review. Okay, there it is, CL5. I didn't see it up here, it's in the pull down. So there's CL5, our new index, that's called reviews, and it has the default format. So we're going to uh, click add format and get rid of all this. I'll cut that out and put it, replace it with our new. Okay, I finished my code. What I'm going to do is in the first column where the icon goes, is I'm going to add an if. The if is going to say if DC format is equal to PDF, which only occurs for our PDF documents, then what do we do? Well, we're going to um, add a little style, a little margin to it. We're going to hyperlink it to the actual document, and we're going to use a replacement icon. So we've put in our collections images folder a new icon called PDF.png, which is nicer than the default. And you notice there's no, uh, if this is not true, if it's not true, then it's an image, we're not going to display it. Now the second column we do the same thing. If it's equal to PDF, we're going to make a nicer font, we're going to display the movie title, who reviewed it, which we put in DC Contributor, uh, what type of uh, document this is, and then a text hyperlink using the EX source link to the actual PDF document. So I've copied this in, 
here we put it in here. There it is. It's easier to work in a text editor and just copy things in. And let's take a look at what we got. This is our old one, right? Here's the problem with the double documents. Let's take a look at the new one. Oops, that's not the one we want. Uh, sorry, reviews. Ah, here we are. Here's our new one. Uh, you see the nicer PDF icon. Uh, there's our second column with the uh, information, the reviewer name, what type it is, that's a review, this is an article. Um, we have a text hyperlink in case the person doesn't know that this is the hyperlink. Um, you notice when we mouse over this it says where it is. It's the index associated and then has the directory and then the actual doc PDF. So there, this is not bad. We've got a little bit, of, we could have a bit more space uh, up here. Uh, what I've done in there is put a bit of pixels, nine pixels in, Probably the first column should go down a bit more, would make it look nicer. But it's not bad. Okay, so that solves our first problem. Second problem is our titles index is a mess, so we've got to fix that up. Okay, I finished the coding for my titles index because uh, I have two things. To say. So the first thing is uh, first column. Uh, I'm checking to see whether DC format. Now, if it's JPG in there, it's my movie poster. So I know that's equal to JPG. What should I do? I'm going to link it. The thumb, I'm going to display the thumbnail icon, but hyperlink that to the full document, right? Not to the bigger picture, but to the full document. So that's column one. So you notice after the column is what's true, and I don't have a second comma, so I'm not um, doing anything if it's not true. The second a TD or column. It's going to check for DC format and then we're going to display the movie title, the director, the year, the length. And again we're hyperlinking to the document text with the full record. So once I put this in into my uh, format format features into my title one, here it is down there, we could take a look. We see now here are the movies. This is now hyperlinked to the document text. Right, so there's the thumbnail icon. We have the second column displaying the metadata and a text hyperlink that goes to the document text level. So this is good. So this is our movies here and we still have our associated stuff. I called it reviews, though they're really not reviews in many cases over here. Um, so some are reviews, some are other things. So now we've got two things. Now there is a couple problems. We would still have to go back and do that logic of uh, checking for uh, either JPEG or PDF in DC format for our other ones, right? We have to fix this up for genre, subject, and for actors, possibly, you know, they're okay. Directors are all right, but for the titles. But we're also going to have to fix it up for the search. Why? Because a search for something may return what? What if we want to search the supplementary material and reviews, or we want to search something here? Right now, I think uh, the search is for... Uh, Okay, it's searching, uh, I think, titles, descriptions, and stuff like that. But we may want to have a search that only searches the full text of this. Right now we have no full text search engine. But we may want one that goes after our supplementary material. And here we are in the design search indexes. Yes, our default index right now goes after descriptions and titles. Uh, we can add a new index that's going to be the full text one. It's going to be a full text index. Right. So let's add that. What we're going to have to do is make some changes to it though. Okay, so I've created the, recreated the full text search engine, but remember that our main content files are JPEGs which have no text, so we don't want to index those again. So what are we going to do? Well, if you click on partition indexes, what I've done here is add a new partition and it's called reviews. You know, so I got reviews and what I've done to it, uh, can you bring it back up? Uh, how did I do? Oh, I defined the filter for it. Uh, what I did down here is defined as a filter. So I called it reviews and it's based on the file name and it's based on, so you've got, you're based on something, I've based it on the file name. I could base it on actually DC format, so anything with PDF and DC format, but I based it on the file name being a PDF. If it's a PDF, we include it in this partition, search partition. So that means the JPEGs don't get included. So then when I built my search on here, I also did one other thing. I changed the uh, label of the search from the default to say review. So now the users can search 
uh, the titles or descriptors, and here I've called it keywords. I probably should do something better. But they can also search the text of reviews. Let's take a look at that. So if a person goes on and decides to search, they click on the search button. Here's our uh, previous one. You can search keywords, uh, blah, blah, blah. Right? We can also search for reviews. So if I search reviews, I'm going to get what? Now, you know, it's not very well formatted because I still got the old format. I'm going to have to change it to use ifs to say if it's PDF or JPEG, what to do. But we see these are the reviews. Tim Mackesy's review of the King's Speech, this article on Slumdog Millionaire and stuff like that. So now the person has two things. They can search the actual content for example, something like plays or works or poetry, and they can search associated materials or supplementary things like academic criticisms, critiques, reviews, or whatever, and the things are two separate. Now, the last thing we want to do is we should fix up the formatting of this stuff, but we also want to replace our bookshelf icons with something nicer. Okay, I've finished the code for our director's index. Now, because we have the two things to take care of, we also have uh, the uh, numleaf dogs problem. So what I've done is, first column, we've checked to see if numleaf dogs exists. If it is, we're at the index node level, so we're going to hyperlink, and we've replaced the bookshelf icon with our new image we've got here. So we've got a number of images. I've tried out several of them. Here we have a bunch of arrows and things. I've gone with one called Folder. I think I'll use that one, try it out. And the link is really here. It's not anything. Notice we're using the same link that normally links to the document text at the record index level. At the index node level, it links to the index entries. So that's in the first column. So what we should see there is this. See, we've got a icon. There's our folder icon, a replacement. Okay, what's in the second column? The second column, again, we're checking to see if numleaf docs exists, which only exists for index nodes. So if it's true, what are we going to display? We're going to display the index node te uh, text, right, whatever director it is, and we're going to make it in a nice font, a larger font, and give it a little bit of white space. So that's that. There it is. So that's the second column. This is at the index node level in an AZ compact list. Now in the third column, what are we going to do? The third column is down here. If numleaf docs exist, this is true, we're going to actually display the value of it. So we're going to display whatever's in the numleaf docs variable. There it is. And there it is, number two. So probably should put a little space around it. So this is at index node level. So if we click this hyperlink thing, where does it go? It goes down. Ah, shows us what's underneath. Underneath we see there's two entries under drama. There's history and mystery. What if we click on one of these? Ah, we see under mystery there's a thing called crime. And you notice it's showing us each record as we go through. So we know that it works for the index nodes. Now, we, you notice we never ever get down to here because this is never not true yet. What if it's not true? If we click on this one here, it's going to show us the records. This is the deepest level of our index. We click on this, or this doesn't matter. Ah, it starts to show us the records. So now this is the record level display. So what we're seeing down here is in the first column, um, we don't really care because uh, there's nothing there. The second column, so you know we have no faults option. In the second column, if numleaf drox is not true, this is the second comma right there. If Lumley Flux is not true, then we're down at the record level. So what we're doing, we're just going to show the title, the director, the year, the length, and a hyperlink to the full record. So where does this link go to now? To the document text. You notice up here in the index node, the link went to the index entries. Makes sense. Here the link goes to the document text. In the third column, which is this here. So there's our link that will go to the document text. There we are. Ooh, let's go back. In the third column, what are we doing? If numleaf docs is true, we're displaying it. But what if it's false? So here's the false. The second column, what are we doing? We're making a link to the thumbnail icon and the link. So we're displaying the picture. And you notice it's hyperlink to document text. So this gives us a way of producing a fairly nice AZ compact list with hierarchies we can drill up. We can drill down, right, any way we want. So that's how you can do that.